It's been three weeks since the rising Volt tacklers separated with Diana. Now as they make way for Paldea to learn more about Terra Pagos, they come into a bit of a roadblock. This week, Freed reveals that they're running out of money, which considering how many picnics and meal celebrations they do every other episode, I can't say I'm surprised, but this forces everybody to find odd jobs to help continue funding their adventures. Meanwhile, Lee goes assigned to write a report about the bond between a Pokemon trainer and their partner who she's familiar with, and why she admires them. Just as she's considering her choices, she immediately decides on Freed and Captain Pikachu as she overhears Freed's request to help find a lost Bramblin. Now, Liko joins Freed and Cap to assist the search and to study their bond for her report. How will it go down? Let's find out. Funny enough, this is approached like a Wild West story with a few familiar tropes. There's even a gang of Pokemon hunters who are catching wild Pokemon, which of course some of those battles were gonna go off screen. Dang. But I appreciate the diversity in Pokemon they have, since usually Pokemon hunters in the anime wouldn't have some of these more unique selections. Like my boy Avalog! We also meet with Bramlin's trainer, Shine, who's also an old friend of Freed's, but he works to protect the wild Pokemon from the hunters. But because he's too busy with work to find Bramlin, this leads Freed, Liko, and Roy to scour the desert. When we do meet with the leader of this group of hunters, we discover she's after Pokemon she only deems as cute. And she finds Pikachu incredibly cute. This messes with his allergies during the beginning of the fight. Speaking of which, let's talk about Captain Pikachu for a minute. Despite the story's focus on freeing Captain Pikachu, we don't learn too much about them. We already knew they don't always see eye to eye, but Freed finds a way to work around Pikachu's decisions and we see them strategize this by the end of the story. But the only really new thing we learned is Pikachu's allergic to being called cute. It was pretty funny the first time around. The second time though, we do see how this affects him in battle. Pikachu struggles to lay a hit, but he's still able to dodge most attacks. Luckily, Lee and Roy assist him until he's back to full strength. Speaking of which, I'm glad to see this is happening the other way around, since Frida's always had to rescue them in prior episodes. It's something I think Horizons was going to do so soon, but I'm happy it's here. To move on to the visual side of things, I love the change of scenery for this episode. The textures from the concrete to the sand make this desert landscape look incredibly detailed, and I like how there's a little bit of life here, from not just the Pokemon, but to even the tumble weaves blowing in the wind. This makes their search for Bramblim not as easy as it would appear. Overall, this episode feels Feels like a classic treat to the casual Pokemon of the day stories, and it allowed characters like Freed, Pikachu, and Liko to shine while being engaged in part of the story. Heck, we don't really do too much with Liko's studies since she left for the Indigo Academy, so I'm glad we were able to integrate into this week's storyline. I hope the next time we get more open episodes like this next batch, we receive more world building from the characters and backgrounds they've set up. We give the duo in the wilderness, Freed and Cap, a 6 out of 10. Wait, how does she do on that report? Are we really just gonna leave it on a clip? <laughs>